I'm going to do a three tools, two projects tutorial. And I'm going to make this really pretty antiqued butterfly and this pendant or amulet, however you'd like to use it with the dangle. And what I did is I featured three tools that to me looked like they would go together for some really interesting reasons. And the um, butterfly project came together very organically, whereas the um, pendant project I had planned out. So sometimes when you're looking at stuff on your work table, you might get inspired and that's what happened. And I am really looking forward to showing you how that all turned out. So before I start, I just want to announce two things that um, Bonnie Kruger won our Pin It to Win It contest. So thanks, Bonnie. And if you want to win contests, come on over and like our page on Facebook because we often have contests there. We are Polymer Clay Productions on Facebook. Also, I wanted to let you know that we have a brand new silk screen in stock today. This one is called Snails in the Garden, and it has all these funky spiral designs and this really beautiful area. That's what I used in the silk screen part of my project today, and a bunch of flowers and backgrounds, and it is just really gorgeous. This is the actual size of the overall stencil and then there's a squares portion that has some of the parts of it sort of flipped and turned around and made into different configurations and then what I actually used today in my project was the circle version and for a very short time until next week's newsletter they are on sale so if you don't get our newsletter sign up at polymerclaytv.com now let's go ahead and get started with our project if you want to follow along with me, what I'm using here is the Fleur Fancy Mold, the beautiful Bollywood Mold, and the Floral Heart Mold from Polymer Clay TV. I have a one and three quarters inch circle cutter, a flexible blade, an X-Acto knife, and some Primo Clay. This is Periwinkle uh, Sunset Pearl Accents and Copper Accents. So what I'm going to talk about today is molds, specifically these three, and how they have the same things on each side, which makes them symmetrical. So I'm actually not going to use any of these molds by themselves. I'm going to use pieces and parts of all three to make a couple of little projects to show you what I mean. So basically, I really like to look for molds that are like this. They have the same design on both sides, and they that means that they can be flipped and they can be used together to make things that you might want to be the same on both sides, such as wings, earrings, um, and other sort of the architectural details of putting things together and having something be the same on both sides, like your hands. So I'm just going to show you some of the things that I already worked on here while I was playing. Okay, so you can see here, this is one of the... Um, bottom pieces here. So this is the one on this side. And then here are other couple other pieces. This is this piece here comes from this side of this mold. So it looks like that. This little delicate piece came from this wing right here. And then this is actually, when I was looking at this heart, I was thinking how cool these two pieces look. So this is actually coming from this part of this mold. It's this cool, spirally looking thing. So I'm just going to put together a really quick little project using some of these pieces to create a butterfly. So 
what I did with my clay is I mixed together my sunset pearl and my periwinkle with a little bit of copper in them because I want these colors to all go together really nicely and I feel like the periwinkle <clears throat> is a little bit deep so when I mixed it with the pearl it's a little bit lighter it's got the shimmer in it now and I feel like it's going to go better together with the pearl and the copper for the bottom half of the wings, I'm going to use these interesting spiral shapes. This mold is a little bit soft, so I'm going to make sure that my clay is good and warm and malleable before I go shoving it in there. And I'm just going to press it into just this upper edge corner area where the spiral is, and I'm going to use my blade to gently shave back the part that's kind of hanging over the edge and I'm not going to worry about the other overlap that's what my exacto knife is for so I'm just making sure that I have enough clay and that it's good and hot and I'm going to do this side now shaving it back because I want it to be flat okay so now I have these that can face each other and be similar and then from this I'm going to use my coral clay to create the upper part of the wings from this and how much clay it takes to fill your mold is something that you learn over time from using the individual molds but I like to sort of start out with this pointy shape so that I can make sure I'm getting clay down into the bottom point of a mold that's shaped like this and I'm not going to be perfect because I have other plans in mind so I don't care if it's perfect I do know that I want some of this area because that's going to form my anchor and just be careful if you use your blades with your molds not to cut the mold so just you know be gentle kind of like and you'll see in a second when I demold this I like this particular mold for the bottom pieces because when you don't fill them all the way out to the edge then the pattern that you get tends to look kind of like a feather which is one of my favorite motifs but I didn't want it to be a feather otherwise I would have used a different mold that looks more like a feather the other thing is you know we have a a feather mold in the shop but they are not uh, symmetrical so here we go with the two parts that are going to face each other and match like that and then for the bottom now is when you can play and you can decide with your blades and cutting tools what shape you would like this to have and this is what makes using molds lots of fun because 
you know, a lot of people look at a mold and only see the molded portions. And I, when I look at a mold, I see what else I could do. So I hope that this encourages you to take a new look at any molds that you might have and see what else could you do with that molded part. So I'm going to get a tile so that I can make my finished piece in the shape that I want to keep it. The piece I have came from this side, so we're going to go ahead and mold the opposite side. And these molds are so delicate, like the little pieces coming off, it would be a pain to try to fill that only, so I do like to get enough clay to go over the whole thing and overfill it and then shave it back. So I'll press the clay down into the mold. And then carefully shave it down to just what's in there. And just be gentle, go slow, because it is a mold that has some really small parts and pieces. See there, I took a little too much back. So you can refill it and try again. In fact, I'm going to go this way because of the direction of that piece. sticking to my finger. And then at this point you can just sort of pull and fold the clay back into the mold only. If any part is underfilled you can feel it now and you can fill it back up again. With just little bits. I'm just making sure that what I pull out of here is substantial enough to hold together. And then pick up an edge. And these are very nicely releasing molds, so you can just gently peel it out. So now I've got some more parts and pieces and I need my powdered pigment. So before I stick on my actual little copper parts there, I'm going to use some sparkling copper perlex to highlight my design. So I'm going to put that along the high parts of my upper wings and my lower wings. Perlex is great for bringing out the details. And you see what I'm doing here? I like to stick my finger in there and then tap it off in the lid so that I don't get huge clumps of Perlex on my project. And then I can just use my lid as the palette to get more for my finger. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and place these elements because I just think that they're pretty and that they will add a little something to my butterfly design. I'm just touching them down to the clay underneath. And then I can <clears throat> highlight those as well with some more of this sparkle. And 
Remember that Perlex uh, sticks to the clay when it's not cured. All right, if you, it's something that you want to use on your clay before you bake. After it was baked, you would have to use some kind of a medium to make it stick. Okay, now since this is a butterfly, it needs a little body. And that's pretty easy to do. I'll just make some, make a round part for its head. And then I'll make a long part for the body and tail. And you could do so many things here. If you wanted to get decorative, you could even use part of this mold up here in the top. And as I'm looking at it, the bottom too, I might be pulling that whole thing off there and starting with this. Okay. So this little sort of button area at the top And then this part down here at the bottom, it's like a teardrop. Thinking that these might be good for a butterfly body. And a butterfly head. even if I pick this up a little and stick that under so it's not quite so large. There we go. Okay, and then accent it with a little more of your sparkly powder. and we'll bake that. For my next little project, I'm gonna use a silk screen and the sort of wing areas of this Bollywood mold. So I'm gonna use copper. And I'm going to use a snake of it. And go up this side like that. And just carefully, gently carve this back because it's definitely overfilled. And I only want up to these edges this sort of fancy frill edge thing that's going on there. That's what I want. There we go. I don't care how long it is right now. What I'm concerned about is that I got this edge design. Like that. because I'm going to use my blades to trim and cut and make this into the shape that I want it to be. So I'm just using a snake to pick up this pattern on both sides.
So I'm making sure that I've got that pattern really good. And then pull this out. So now I have the matching two sides on the Bollywood mold. And these are going to go with a silk screened center part. My paint is dry, so I'm going to pick the portion of this that I like the best and cut it out. Okay, and then I'm going to peel this up and put it on my tile because that's the best place to manipulate and get this all going the way I want it to go. So I'll leave it right there and then I'm going to think about how much of this I have and what I want to do with it. So I know since I have this part and this part at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and cut off Notice I'm not slicing, I'm pressing it down to meet my finger. Please don't cut yourself, be careful. And then up here, where the design sort of comes this way and ends, I'm going to cut that off too. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done on this side as well. and then trim up any little edges and pieces that are hanging off out of the design, which sometimes happens with a mold that has lots of little bits and pieces. You might need to trim a little bit, which is why I always keep this style of X-Acto blade around in my studio. It's, it's like a long, thin, knife with a very sharp little tip there to get into the small tight places. All right, so now that I have these two, let's make sure this is rounded. I have these two pieces and I've got to see how much more, how much further I might want to go. So I know I want them to surround and support this piece. And that might be perfect just the way it is. So if I press this down it will stick during baking to the clay underneath. And then what I do believe I will do is come back after it's baked and antique this part with this color of paint that I used. So I'll come back and do that afterwards because this precious metal color, I really love the mica in it. It is just a fabulous mica paint for polymer clay. While I'm looking at this, I'm going to see if there's anything I need to touch up with my rubber tipped tools that I always keep on my work surface and my um, my ball stylus tool. And what I'm thinking here is I see down here that this circle is sort of lost. So I'm gonna bring it back. So I'm just looking for the details right now, just making sure that I don't lose anything in the baking process, because I really like all these sort of deep areas and I want them to stay that way because I'm going to put paint inside of them. So if there's a sort of circular area or a line, like this line got a little bit lost, I'm just putting them back in. because later when I antique it, I want there to be a space for the paint. So just take a look at your things before you stick them in the oven and make sure that everything you have in mind is ready for you after it bakes. And then I've got my 
knitting needle and I'm going to make holes because I'm thinking this will end up attached to something either jewelry or something for the wall uh, I really like the space that I've got right here so I'm going to put a hole here so I can dangle something in between and then I'm just going to make sure all my edges are rounded all my little pieces are off that everything's as perfect as I can make it before it goes into the oven. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and bake both of my pieces so that I can finish them. Okay, we are out of the oven after half an hour of baking. And uh, I want to do some antiquing real quick because these pieces, and I would say most pieces that are carved in any way, could really use it to bring out their details. So you see how this looks before antiquing. Kind of plain. I mean, you can see the details because I highlighted them with the Perlex powders. But after antiquing, I think that we'll like it much better. So I'm just going to use some uh, acrylic. This is raw umber, probably my favorite color for doing this just a deep dark brown and I'm going to use a tooth a q-tip today just getting it down in the cracks and now it's start on one side of your piece go slowly you want to get the paint down in all the little cracks and then take a dry cloth and you're gonna wipe that paint back so it's going to stay in the cracks and depressions and come off the top Now before the paint is completely dry, <clears throat> I like to make, this is what I call decision time. All right, I've got some water and I'm going to wet down part of one of my little shop cloths that I keep around and come back because you can get even more of the paint off with a wet rag and then really bring the color back in some of those areas. If you think maybe the paint stained the clay a little too much. And then of course water is the best way to clean your excess paint from your work surfaces. So just Go ahead and clean as you go. And then you have the piece after antiquing, which I think has a lot more depth and character to it. So now this butterfly can be used for so many things. You can put it into a jewelry piece, you can put it onto an art piece, you can dangle things from it. It's just such a fun little element. Now let's have a look at this other piece. And while I was looking at my scraps lying on the table, I decided to roll my scrap pieces that came from that circle that I cut out into this little bead that I can now dangle down here when I'm done. So I just put it on a, <clears throat> I put it on an Amico 
bead thingy. I keep a pack of these lying around just in case I need them. And in this case I did. They come in this uh, tube. So I've got my pack of those just lying here ready to work with and I just popped a little Swarovski crystal in there and now I have a bead I can dangle. And this piece. This piece now is ready for some more work. See how dimensional and pretty that silk screened area came out. Now I want to match these to it. And for that, I am going to use that same precious metal coral color and now you can see how really nice these colors are on the clay. So I'm going to go ahead and just swab this color all over this element. Let it get in all the cracks. And then I'm going to use my dry cloth first to take it down. Isn't that nice? And then probably my wet cloth just to do a little detail work, make sure that it's really off the copper part. I just want it to be off the top so that I can see all the details and then do the other side. So this is how you would antique with the same color paint that you used to silk screen which brings your whole design together really well, it gives you some good harmony. I would not antique this with my um, dark brown colored paint. I don't think that that's the best way to do it, to get it all matching. I'm just coming back with my wet cloth to really make sure that it's off the top area. and then just let that dry.